and welcome. It's another episode of The Nonprofit Show, and I am so happy to have with us today Jennifer Vogler. She's joining us uh, to talk to us about language that speaks to your donors. So stay with us. Uh, again, Jennifer of uh, uh, Jennifer Vogler Creative, and I'll share a little bit more about her, and she'll share a little bit more about herself momentarily. But before we jump into this conversation about how to speak in language that's going to attract those donors, I want to reintroduce ourselves in case this is your first time joining us. Julia Patrick, hello to you, my friend. Julia hello. is the CEO of the American Nonprofit Academy and had this wonderful idea to create the nonprofit show, and we are marching towards our 800th episode, and I am so honored, so very honored to serve alongside you, Julia, each and every day, day in and day out. I'm Jarrett Ransom, your nonprofit nerd, CEO of The Raven Group, and day in, day out, these companies have been with us from many since the very beginning. So for those of you listening, I want to give a shout out to our friends. Thank you so very much to Bloomerang. American Nonprofit Academy, Fundraising Academy at National University, Nonprofit Thought Leader, Your Part-Time Controller, Staffing Boutique, Nonprofit Nerd, and Nonprofit Tech Talk. Please check out these companies. As I remind you, many of them have been with us from the very beginning. And what I like to say, although they have other missions, but one of their main mission is your mission. So they really are here to lean into your cause and to help you do more good in, around, and throughout your community. So if you missed any of our episodes, I mentioned nearly 800 now, you can find us on Roku, YouTube, Amazon Fire TV, as well as Vimeo. And for those of you that are podcast listeners, go ahead and queue us up there as well. Uh, you can sign up and subscribe. You can give us some amazing reviews on there, uh, but definitely tune in to all of these amazing places where you can stream this entertainment. Um, at any time at zero cost. So make sure that you do that. So our guest, again, I am just so happy to have you, uh, Jennifer Vogler, CEO of Jennifer Vogler Creative, joining us from Colorado. And I believe that I found you, Jennifer, on Instagram. So for those of you that are uh, on Instagram, please do follow Jennifer. Amazing content that she puts out there. I love it. I laugh. It's like just spot on. I think you're you're speaking the words that we all need to hear. So Jennifer, welcome. Thank you for joining us. Hi, everyone. Thank you so much for having me. Um, I'm really excited to be here. And yeah, thanks for reaching out. You can find me on Instagram at Jennifer Vogler Creative. Yeah. Tell us a little bit about your company and how you serve the nonprofit community. Yeah. Um, so I help nonprofits expand their impact. Um, what it might look like is marketing help, social media help, mm -hmm. grant writing, um, event planning, or on the strategy side, something like creating sponsorship levels for your fundraising events, um, helping with your year-end giving campaign, things like that. Um, I've kind of done it all. I've co-founded a nonprofit. I've worked in marketing and events and done an, a lot of grant writing and development. So really um, kind of customize my work depending on what the nonprofit needs. I tend to work with a lot of organizations who are one-person shops or not even a full-time staff member. Um, so to outsource some of those things that need to get done, but there's no time for that person to do it. Perfect. Yeah. Well, it's such an <clears throat> important thing is to, to have people in your back pocket like you who can help us tell our stories, you know, build that bridge of communication, which is so crucial. Um, and for me, it's really one of those foundational pieces yeah. of success. So it's really cool to have you on today to talk about that. And I want to start with uh, something that you've said uh, on your website and in, in, in some of your work. The, bus the business of nonprofit is business. Yeah. And I'd love for you to kind of frame up what, frame up what we're going to talk about because this, kind, this tends to be a little sticky of an issue. And I don't know why. Yeah, I don't know why either. Um, but something that I've found is that I'm always the one who's pushing the business side of um, the event or the marketing or the strategy. 
and reminding everyone that we're out here to change lives, to have an impact. And in order to do that, we need money. And so if our focus is to raise money to then expand our impacts, then we're doing our business. <laughs> um, and sometimes I think we we think about free help and um, how can we serve the community um, with the lowest overhead and um, that can be dangerous because we need to spend money to be able to expand our impact and serve more people. Yeah. You know, one of the things, and I'm curious, Jennifer, if you have experienced this as well, I hear from a lot of organizations that are, you know, what I would consider those smaller organizations that you mentioned, maybe maybe one, two, three staff members, and they really fuel their organization by passion mm -hmm. and not by funding, not by money. And so it's like passion can only go so far. And as we've all experienced uh, compassion fatigue and burnout, it's like passion is not the fuel that will keep your lights on 10 years down the road, our road. Have you seen this as well? Have you experienced that? Yeah, definitely. It will, it will get you started. It will get some passionate people on your board as your first board members. Mm -hmm. But if you don't have a strategy for fundraising and the systems in place to communicate with your donors after they donate um, and to strategize larger partnerships, um, you're going to burn out. Yeah. Yeah. It's really an interesting conversation. And, and I think that it's one, as Jarrett, you said, you know, it's just, um, it's a hard one to have, especially in the beginning. Um, and then there's like shame. It seems like when you lose your passion or you, you just get exhausted, you know, that like, then what do you do? Um, one of the things that you talk about, Jennifer, and I'm really interesting, interested to get more um, feedback is cause selling and how raising money works into that, um, not just through fundraising, but you said something really interesting and that was having a strategy about this. Yeah. Talk to us about that. Yeah, so you talk, you start with the passion, right? And you have some people who are involved who are really passionate and can get some friends to donate and maybe they know a company over here that has a little foundation. Um, but how do you really build the actual foundation for success? Um, so how do you get involved in community events? How do you strategize major gifts or corporate sponsorships or a once a year gala or some sort of fundraising events? Um, what are these different pillars that you can use to raise money to support your mission? Mm -hmm. Um, Another thing I talk about a lot is program costs and program fees. A lot of nonprofits want to provide all their programs for free. And that's great if you can do it. Um, but you don't have to provide every program for free for everyone. You can have scholarships. You can have different opportunities for people who can't afford your programs to participate. And you can still charge for your programs because it's going back into your mission. And it's helping those that can't afford your programs. Um, and I think a lot of times nonprofit leaders want to do everything for everyone um, yeah. for free, but it's your, remember, it bears on you. It does. And I remember seeing that post again, back to your Instagram uh, feed that talks about this because you're right. And I've, I've been with numerous organizations that I've heard from the board, well, we can't charge for this. Right. And my, my thought and my question back to them is why? And yeah. did you know that X, Y, and Z other nonprofits charge for their services? And they're like, I had no idea. And it's yeah. like, it is a big piece of many organizations, mm -hmm. you know, revenue streams and revenue models. So I love that you're waving that flag, Jennifer. I love mm -hmm. that you're bringing, you know, attention and education to that because that is a big piece, you know, raising money to support our mission. We exist to, you know, to really provide a, a solution to that community problem. So why not charge right. for organizations and people that might be able to pay for that? Right. Yeah. It's, it's an interesting aspect. And some of the things that you're talking about 
are really foundational to marketing mm -hmm. um, because you have to have some of these decisions made before you market or before you brand. And so let's kind of jump into that um, with the, the notion that how do we speak about our cause and about our impact? Um, because that's kind of like, to me, that magic elixir that allows us to go back out into that fundraising community or mode. What are you, what are you seeing and, and how can we really look at this? Yeah, I'm going to share with you my favorite nugget. And I even <clears throat> have notes here so that I don't mess it up. Um, <laughs> because I want to give credit to the person who developed this framework. Um, are you guys familiar with Donald Miller and the story brands framework? Um, he speaks a lot and I've kind of uh, shifted it into this nonprofit space of positioning the donor, the volunteer, the supporter as the hero, not mm -hmm. your organization. Yeah. So a lot of times we hear organizations that make it about themselves. They say, your donation allows us to, or we brought out this many yeah. volunteers. And you're making it about yourself instead of making it about the cause, which is what people care about. People don't care about your organization, how many staff members you have and how many volunteers you brought out. They care about the impact. So instead, your donation and then state the impact preserves the forest or rescues dogs or feeds um, the hungry. So when you're speaking, um, speak about the cause and the impact and not what you do. Make the donor, the supporter, the hero of the story. I love the reframe and I feel like this is coming from more organizations more and more, Jennifer, probably over the last year I've seen it, but I really feel like maybe many of us, myself included, you know, got into this like pattern and then just kind of trapped into the, well, this is how we talk. This is our language. This is our voice. But yeah. now hearing this reframe, I just, I love it. And it, it does speak, you know, to the heroes of the community that are allowing this impact because of their support. Yeah, I hear a lot of times at the end of the year or after your year end giving, we yeah. raised $80,000. Right. Just change it to you raised right. $80,000 because you're speaking to the people that donated and they're yeah. the ones that did it. You just kind of facilitated and guided it. Um, Donald Miller would use guide as your, um, as your role, right? No. You're the guide. You're not the hero. Mm -hmm. They're the hero. Make them feel like the hero. Yeah. yeah. And then I think that speaks to like naturally just chemical, natural chemicals in our body endorphins, right? Like then we feel good and we want to do more of that. We want to do more, you know, supporting individuals, preserving forest. Yes. And I just think then that just, you know, repeats a cycle of just altruistic feel good. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know, a lot of times you, you hear that BOY, use the BOY because of you. Right. And I think if for somehow, some reason, and we have a guest later on this week um, who's going to be talking about nonprofit growth. And I think a lot of times we get trapped in the nonprofit sector about growth, 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 and you know what it means and the numbers and how many employees we have and how many buildings. And, mm -hmm. and we've we don't frame the discussion. So it's interesting that you would bring this up because um, we're somewhat trapped in this, this thought about what do we promote, right? Do we, yeah. do we look more successful when we have more employees? Yeah. And what does your audience want to hear? Why are they there? You know? Yeah. 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 I it's remember hearing from one of our guests, Julia, over the three years, and I can't recall who it is, but they had said, no one cares about your board. Like they don't want to hear who your board is. And I was like, oh, that is shocking. Really? <laughs> you know? And I really feel Jennifer, like similarly, yeah. you said the same. It's like, no one cares how many staff members you have. No one cares. Like what we really care about is how many people have received shelter, how yeah. many animals have received a new home, right? Like that is the impact. And that is why, you know, we want to give to these organizations and why we, we galvanize to provide that support. Yeah. 
Jennifer, why do you think that we um, in the nonprofit sector don't look at the impact as much as we should? Like, how do we start kind of reframing, to use your word, to be thinking more about impact? Yeah. Um, I wonder, for a while, we were talking about sharing our story, right? Why did you get into yeah. nonprofit? Why did Why did your organization feel tell your story. Mm -hmm. It just, um, I think it's a little piece of it and it's nice. It's a nice to have, but I don't think it's how you should strategize your marketing, um, mm -hmm. or your development really. Um, because it's not really about your organization. It's about the people that you're serving or, or your cause or your impact really. Mm -hmm. Do you so know, one of the things, of sorry to, to interrupt. Uh -huh. One of the things I've heard recently is like, you know, when, when this problem is solved, this is where we would be. So really painting the picture for the donors and the constituents, like we wouldn't be here if this problem wasn't here. So help us eliminate this problem. And that to me, I thought was like the most shocking of shocking, because that clearly would put people out of jobs, right? It would put organizations, you know, on the disillusion list. It would, yeah. it would just like really change the community. And I thought, but that is our mission. Our mission is to eradicate homelessness, eradicate oh. hunger. Imagine if we did that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's an interesting thing. Talk to me a little bit, Jennifer, about the visual piece of community of communicating um, our, our impact and, and falling into the rabbit hole of data and overwhelming people with, with that. Or do you feel like that's that's where we need to be like kind of help us understand that yeah i think some people really like the data really like the numbers um so i i do think you want to have multiple um <clears throat> means of sharing your yeah. impact some people want to see a video of the person or the animal or the whoever that you um, change their life, right? They want to hear the story from their mouth. Some people want to see a picture of it. Some people want to read a statistic. Some people want to know, <clears throat> you know, where their exact dollars went. Um, so I think including all of that is really valuable. One thing I saw that was really cute this year um, in like a year end kind of summary from a trail group is they did all their normal statistics and then they did we packed out however many feet of toilet paper and they did oh, some silly yeah. ones and this many snack bars eaten by our staff. Mm -hmm. And so you get this in the mail and you read about the amazing work that they did and the impact that they had, but you also have like a little laugh, right? Yeah. 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 You make it more real. Yeah. Yeah. You I, make like it I think just approaching it from different angles because different people respond mm -hmm. to um, to different things. Yeah. Talk to us a little bit about moving through that with the use of, uh, of visual tools such as photography and video and even audio. I know you're so active on Insta and, and you communicate a lot through your voice, you know, on Instagram. Mm -hmm. What are you seeing some of the things that we can as nonprofits, you know, use? Yeah, I think video is huge right now, okay. um, whether it be a YouTube, Instagram. I think it depends on, I mean, TikTok too, maybe, depending on where that's going this week. Um, but <laughs> I think it's important to know your audience and who you're trying to target and then choosing. There's so many different means of social media. You can do podcasts, right? Um, so figuring out where your audience kind of lives in their social media life. And then creating things that are valuable, things that are educational, um, things that have a little sense of humor. My my Instagram's kind of silly. Um, and if you don't like silly, then you're not probably going to follow me. You have to be yourself. Um, I think nonprofits can really showcase their personality more. Um, we tend to go into Canva and make like a pretty post, which is great, but it doesn't reach a lot of people. Um, and people want to connect with you. They want to see the people behind the nonprofit. They want to see what you're actually doing. 
Um, so I do share a lot of tips on my Instagram uh, for how nonprofits can make reels and videos that show their impact or highlight their volunteers, um, things like that. Yeah. I'm all up for the silly. So you've got me hooked on that one. Yeah, Jennifer. <laughs> yeah. Question though, is, you know, we talk a lot about, and I am sure you do too. There's so much noise. There is a lot of content. There's a lot of material. There's a lot of opinions. Mm -hmm. How are you guiding your clients to really cut through the noise and to achieve attention um, you know, from their donors and supporters? Like what, what is that? I don't know. What is the magic algorithm for that? Do you know? Um, there is a lot of noise because every um, social media expert that you follow is going to tell you, tell you that you have to post once a day. So think yeah. about how many people you follow. And if you saw everyone's one post a day, you'd be on scrolling on Instagram all day. So you're only going to see the best content. Um, so really I try to take the pressure off of people. First of all, you don't have to post every day, um, find something that works for you and create a strategy. You can't be going onto your phone every day and thinking, what am I going to post and posting right then and there you'll, you'll burn out. There's no way. Um, so having a strategy, having the content pillars, having some different buckets that you tend to create your content in, um, having a few things just recorded ahead of time and ready to go can be really helpful, but it starts with the strategy. If you're just on there every day and kind of scrolling and copying what other people do and, um, jumping on trends and not really creating your own voice and your own personality really on your social media, um, then you are going to get lost because you're doing what everyone else is doing. Yeah. I heard a fascinating comment um, from someone I, I follow, and I don't think they're in the nonprofit arena, but, mm -hmm. you know, really seen as a thought leader in their space. And they mentioned that they unfollowed everyone that did something similar to them, <sighs> because that was really their way of saying, I am going to create my original content and I'm not going to fall into what you just mentioned, Jennifer, like, you know, recycling something else of, of, of somebody else's post or really like falling into the trap of the latest trend. And I thought, wow, that is brazen, you know, like to unfollow these people. So then it wasn't kind of in, maybe even in their subconscious of right. I'm going to create something similar because look how many engagements they received. And I just thought, Mm -hmm. Wow, that was bold. And I loved it. You know, I was like, that is, that's, that's pretty brave. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I think if you have your personality or your strategy set, you won't be inclined to kind of jump on trends. I definitely follow different creators in different fields. Yes. People like what they do. Yeah. Um, and yeah, I don't, I don't follow people that are kind of doing a lot of, a lot of the same. Um, cause you don't want that influence all the time. You want to see creative things and be inspired. Like I want to follow people that inspire me to do something different than whatever the trending like dance thing is. <laughs> okay. Yeah. It yeah. sounds to me like you're, you're, um, calling us to step back and almost create, if you will, a library of content or images or video and then figure out how we're going to deploy it. Um, or are you advocating that we're a little bit more spontaneous? Like how do we walk that, that line? Yeah. I used to be really into like batching and making, you can do, I can do it still with um, carousel posts where I have a few topics and I'm just going to spend a couple hours um, in Canva and just make a, a bunch of content. Um, as far as videos and things that are more like trendy or on topic, I tend to do them more spontaneous. Okay. Um, so I like having things saved that if I'm having a bad day or I don't want to get in front of the camera, don't want to put my face in front of the camera, I have something I can push out. Um, but also don't pressure myself that I have to push something out every day. Um, I really enjoy creating series. So I have a couple series that I do on my Instagram. One is called Coffee Talk, which is a longer video format where we dive deep into a nonprofit to topic like this. Um, I sit there in a chair with my coffee and, um, and we chat for 45 to 60 seconds. It's not like a trending, I'm not trying to like capture all these 
viewers. It doesn't really have a great reach, but it provides value for people that come to my Instagram and want to dive deep into a topic. Then I'll do some shorter form real videos that maybe use trending audio or a more trending theme um, to try to get out um, and expand my reach. And then I have a lot of carousel posts that are really information packed where someone can go through and, you know, really deep dive and read some things and scroll through my page and they have some content to read. So I think having a varied approach is, um, is really important. I love that. I think it's really smart. And I think it, um, it makes it, what you just said makes it a lot more achievable. Yeah. And I think this is where nonprofits, I mean, get, get stuck. It's like, oh, this is, I can't do this. I can't manage it. I can't achieve it on top of everything else I have to do. It's really been fun to have you on today to talk about this, Jennifer, as we, as we warned you before, man, it goes by so fast. It did go by so fast. I can't believe it, but thank you both so much. This was so much fun. Oh yeah, no, it's been really fun. You've been talking our love language here for sure. And, and that is, you know, how do we talk about ourselves? How do we talk about our impact and our missions? and get other people talking about us as well. Jennifer Vogler, CEO of Jennifer Vogler Creative, jennifervoglercreative.com is where you can find her, as well on, as, well as on many, many uh, social media platforms, especially her Instagram account. Check her out because it's really a great way to get infused by a lot of creativity and support, and maybe it will help you to kind of reframe what it is you're trying to do. So Jennifer, it's been a lot of fun and we are so thrilled that you would join us today from snowy Colorado. If you, joined us, if you joined us early, Jennifer told us that when she woke up this morning, it was one degree out. <laughs> Oy, that's crazy. That's why I have my tea here and I'm in my flannel. So <laughs> I'm nice and cozy. <laughs> Good. Keep it that way because we need to keep you creative. Again, I'm Julia Patrick, CEO of the American Nonprofit Academy. Been joined today by my intrepid co host, Jarrett Ransom, the nonprofit nerd. Again, we are so, so very fortunate to have these supporting people in our lives and on camera with us every day. And they include our friends at Bloomerang American Nonprofit Academy, your part time controller. Nonprofit Thought Leader, Fundraising Academy at National University, Staffing Boutique, The Nonprofit Nerd, and Nonprofit Tech Talk. These are the folks that are with us day in and day out. As a matter of fact, the managing partner, Jarrett, of your part-time controller is in our community uh, for a few days this week. She is, and all of their social media right now is blowing up with their 30th anniversary or birthday. So it's been a lot of fun to watch that. Yeah, it's been amazing. Your part-time controller um, has been with us from the very get-go, and so it's really fun to see them uh, moving forward. Hey, everybody, as we like to end every episode of the Nonprofit Show, we want to remind ourselves, our viewers, our listeners, Jennifer, to stay well so you can do well. We'll see you back here. Thank you so much, Jennifer.